I don't know, become more technical at the game, you can ease yourself into the classic system. Right, okay, okay. So it's basically, it's a, it's a, yeah, that's a, um, an excellent starter pack for people going into fighting games. If I haven't played fighters before, um, fighters, sorry, fighting games before, then this game provides not only a uh, visually, um, I don't know if you spoke about the visions. No, no, we were just going to get on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me, let me let you, uh, I'll let you cook, like, I'll let you cook. Those Visual are visuals, visuals, yeah. Outstanding, I have to say. Okay. Um, you know, it keeps a lot of the traditional 2D sprite feel, so it's not like trying to be a modern or trying to be graphically enhanced. Right. Being realistic would be the right word for that. It's not trying to be like a realistic fighting game or fighting simulator. It's trying to stay true to form, be a fun 2D fighter, mm -hmm. uh, 2D sprites, just a bit more HD advanced, lots of vivid colours, colours everywhere on the screen. Mm -hmm. So you won't be disappointed playing it, you'll always have something to look at. Okay, cool. Alright, so okay, so, so just to summarise then, what would you give it out of 10? Out of 10? Mm. 10 being the best one, well, 0 being, you know. Being unbiased, it can get an 8 out of 10. That's quite right. Ooh. Being unbiased, <laughs> yeah. Unbiased, it can get an 8 out of 10. And what is the reason for giving it an 8? Because Which is too it, away from the it best. easily attracts newcomers. Like, you don't have to be good at any fight. I've played people that are, you know, wanting to learn and get into playing this fighting game and they had no issues having fun and enjoying themselves with the modern system whatsoever. And okay. enjoyed the colours, enjoyed the palette, the choice of characters, the animations, everything. Right. So anyone could pick up and, and go and play this game. It's okay. almost like a Wii Sports or fighting games and yeah. something some for everybody. That's yeah, something for everybody. Oh, okay. For sure. Yeah. Fair enough then, fair enough. Thank you so much for the review for Street Fighter. Then. So, <laughs> Street Fighter gets from um, from Rare Entity a 8 out of 10. I personally think that's very high. But you know, we'll move on. <laughs> we move! We I'm move! Yeah, there, we, there we go, we move. No, 8 to Ranked fighting is 2 away from the best. Okay, we'll <laughs> there we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, your PSN tag for people who, because you own the game, right? Oh yeah, so, uh, what, well what? on Street Fighter you'll mm -hmm. be able to find me as Rare Entity. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so if you want to jump on and get a few tutorials in <laughs> how to get your way <laughs> beat all night, <laughs> then he's your guy for it, yeah? There we go. Right, so we're going to hear from Kay Noir now. Um, Kay Noir had the absolute pleasure of um, playing the Tekken 8 beta. Um, how did you get on with that? Tell, tell us a bit about that, your experience. Start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> from the beginning. So obviously, beginning. July, uh, well, it came out till the end of July, so I was one of the lucky few that actually mm -hmm. got to uh, jump on the game. Right. And I got given the code, uh, started uh, playing that, streamed it actually. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who are interested, came on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> so you're introduced to you know the start screen and you're seeing Kazuya. Amazing graphics, right. control the face, and um, there's actually a tutorial, so it teaches the basic mechanics mm -hmm. of the game, how to move. One thing I should say actually, if there's one for complete newcomers, which will show you how to move. You know what each button does in terms of uh, you know squares, the left limb, for for left punch, triangle, right punch, X, um, left leg, circle, right leg, and Another tutorial for those of you that play Tekken, it's just that, you know, introduction to the heat system, I don't know what that does. Mm. Um, so then you pick a character to go into ranked. I play Brian, so obviously I play Brian. And one of the first things that I noticed is that, uh, you know, it's a complete, uh, it's, a, it's a new sort of um, direction that they're taking the game in, in terms of how they want you to play Tekken. So in Tekken 7, it was more about the neutral game, mm -hmm. you know, movement, poking, um, and trying to find openings uh, via those routes. And in this one, it's more uh, aggression. So an emphasis on using key systems and trying to force a 50-50, which is not how I like to play, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so that was already, so, 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 you know, it's so, so, so negative for me on that aspect of things. But in terms of, you know, the visuals and what they're doing, mm -hmm. on that side of things, it's close to a 10 
as you can get for tapping. It's okay. completely modernized. The stages are amazing. Okay. You know, we have different stage interactions. It's very similar to um, Dead or Alive in what they're doing now. You know, you have uh, these explosive effects. That right. You can then combo off of, you know, the, the classic battle mm. breaks, wall breaks. Um, so interactions on, on the stage and how that looks, 10 out of 10. Very um, diverse in, in terms of the stages as well. Uh, for those of you that play Tekken 7, there were basically 20 stages. Mm -hmm. So they were reusing a lot of what was there already. You know, like the lava stage, which used multiple times. Um, Twilight Zone, which mm. used twice. So there, there wasn't that much variety in that, in that, you know, in that um, side of the things. Um, in terms of, you know, each individual character and what they were doing, Amazing, mm -hmm. you know, um, the direction that they're taking, you know, Brian, Paul, Kazuya, a lot of the, the classic characters is, uh, apart from Paul actually, his redesign is awful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that though, do you think? It's just, it's completely, completely detracts from what he's known for, you know, the... Mm -hmm. oh, okay, the high top. <laughs> the high top, um, him wearing, a, you know, the judo gi, he looks like a troubled middle-aged man. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with being on the ledge. By the way, we'll zoom in on that. By the way, okay? Um, but yeah, aside from that, you know, the characters look great. The visuals are amazing. You know he got his, um, sorry to interject, you know he got his, his hair like his back. No, it's back, yeah, 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 yeah. in a custom, in a custom, yeah. I have to say that too, just in case you guys didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's available. Um, um, the guy of Tekken. Yeah, for real, that's the problem. <laughs> So in terms of the, the combat mm. and the movement, so the movement is actually a lot worse than in Tekken 7. The backdash is uh, a lot shorter, which, which obviously goes to you know, the more aggressive gameplay, which is mm. what they're trying to uh, enforce on Tekken 8. Sidestepping is a bit, uh, it's a bit iffy, so it, it feels a lot better, but sometimes it isn't. Um, obviously these things will be addressed when the actual game comes out mm. in uh, January. Um, combos are very different. They, I think they're trying to make people use heat a lot more to get mm. more wall carry and more damage. Um, which means that you know the co um, combo variation and difficulties of combos has been lowered, making it easier for people to come in and actually play the game. And one thing I forgot to mention is that very similar to Street Fighter, there is like a auto combo, a modernized. Um, Combo system. I think every game seems like that. So yeah. it's what it is, yeah. isn't it? So you just press L one and it does stuff. Square triangle. Yeah. Did they have that in UK though? Um, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, just as just as a summary, then obviously a lot of interesting points that you've um, you've um, that you've gone over in terms of Tekken, in terms of the full experience, and you're obviously uh, given us the perspective of um, a Tekken player, a seasoned Tekken player. Let's just mm -hmm. say, um, have an arc for your rank. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what would you give um what would you give the Tekken 8 beta out of 10? Uh it's a, it's a difficult one. Out of 10, I'd say like 6.5. Damn! Mm. Coming to a very close seven. It just needs to address a couple of things which I'm not happy with. Mm. Like um heat. Six! Enjoyment. Yeah, six. Visually. 10 out of 10, but the way the game plays, oh, which is the main, <laughs> the main crux of it, <laughs> it's, it's a 6, 6 to 7, mm. 7 if I'm being generous. That's fair enough. And the reasons why is because they haven't fixed stuff that you think, you think heat system is a bit... Heat, heat system is broken, you know, mm. certain characters are just going crazy. Okay. Chip damage in heat is right, ridiculous, right, right, right. they need to address that. Okay. They need to nerf combo damage, they need right. to improve movement. Um, there's weird interactions as well, which I've noticed at the wall that you need to improve on. Oh, okay. So, like, so you, like, you just need to, like, oh, it's, it's a beta. So oh, yeah. I'm, so not, I'm, not, I'm not expecting a complete product. All right. Um, for me personally, I'm not really happy with the aggressive uh, tone that they're trying to um, push tech in. Mm. Uh, so hopefully there's less of, you know, the heat stuff, I should say. Okay, fair enough. Alright then, thank you so much for um, the review in Tekken 8 then. So there we go. Tekken 8 was given a 6.5 out of 10 <clears throat> from our very own Kano and he obviously gave his reasons for that. Um, I 
can't say anything on the matter. Okay. <laughs> I was covering that story, but I'll, I'll give it higher than that. I'll give it higher than that, yeah? Um, right, so, <laughs> so moving on, um, I'm going to be taking Mortal Kombat. Um, I had the pleasure of playing that this month, in fact, so it's August right now, um, and jumping on online and really get, um, getting, my, um, getting my feet wet with that. I think, generally, as soon as I turn it on, um, the, the graphics, amazing. I think the best graphics I've seen on a new gen fighting game thus far, they have literally <clears throat> made sure everything looks absolutely perfect. So in terms of the environment, in terms of the actual, when you're fighting and people have like, you know, when you, when they do whatever, they have stuff wrong with them and stuff, visually it's impeccable. Um, so I was very, very happy with that. Um, in terms of the movement though, uh, that's where I, I think it gets drawn down a bit. I feel like it was a bit slow. And I don't mean slow enough to, you know, to affect, like, where I'm, I'm, it's like I'm playing lag, basically, online. But it's still slow in terms of input. It's kind of weird. They've made it so realistic that I, I, I don't want to jump in the game and, and fight. I want to, you know, flex with my character. So I, I, do, I, um, I do appreciate the realism. Um, of it and you know the style of what Neverrealm has done but I still think we need a bit of a speed up just a bit of a you know see when you're editing a video and you just plus one yeah not the plus two <laughs> just the plus one plus one will be like a normal pace I don't want to see anything like Dragon Ball Z fighters or some rubbish like that yeah. but just bring it up to you want pressing square and you know it's a jab not square and input yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very much input to it well that's the way I thought anyway but after playing it uh, it was available for three days um, after playing it on the second day, I got used to the speed, so it wasn't like that much of a thing to me anymore. So I think it's just going to be a thing where people just need to get used to it. Um, the interactions of the game as well were quite fun. Um, Mortal Kombat normally gives us a very good storyline. They never gave us um, anything, uh, because obviously it's a beta. Um, only six characters available that annoyed some people. Um, Melina was kind of like um, fan favourite, her, her, her fan base is quite crazy and they were very upset that she wasn't in the um, the beta as well it was Kenshi. Uh, Scorpion wasn't there either, that caused a little a bit of a stir online because they're thinking, you know, they're not really giving us the classic characters that we would want. I think it was um, Kenshi, Sub-Zero, Johnny Cage, um, Li Mei, who was um, new to the game but obviously she's been part of the Mortal Kombat cast for a while, um, and Katana. And um, each character uh, offering different styles of fighting and stuff like that. Everyone had their own um, type thing. Uh, Sub Zero is broken uh, from what I saw. Okay, very broken. Mm. All right. Um, uh, on the overall of ten, I'll give it a. I think the visuals bring it up to at least an eight point five. I would say I'll give Mortal Kombat an eight point five. In terms of the movement and stuff, that brings it down. Um, it would have been a perfect ten if um, if the movement was there. Perfect ten. But because the, yeah, one point five down because of the um, the, uh, the movement issue. But apart from that, I'm looking forward to it. I pre-ordered. I pre-ordered. Don't let me down. Okay, I don't want to have to sue you. Okay. <laughs> right. Moving on. That's my review for Mortal Kombat. Moving on to Rare Entity once again. They're going to come back and um, say a review on Diablo because Diablo came out this oh, yes, year Diablo as well. Four. The Diablo Four is like. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with like games like Path of Exile, League of Legends, it's this kind of top-down RPG slash dungeon crawler looter game where you're going to be playing for a lot of hours to be fair, um, collecting a lot of loot and customising your class, so there's a couple of classes in the game that you can choose from and um, just basically exploring and dungeon crawling, going through dungeons, getting loot and levelling up uh, to your heart's content really. Um, graphically, it's quite good. Probably the best looking Diablo game in a while. Uh, looks more akin to Diablo 2. Um, let's talk about uh, the classes. So there's some returning uh, classes. I think the Necromancer returns, uh, the Mage returns, or the Sorcerer, which is very popular in the community. Um, I think the Barbarian returns. I think there was a Barbarian before as well. And then uh, the Rogue. It's pretty much a returning character because they had a demon slayer in number three uh, and the rogue pretty much plays quite similar to that and then i think one new character i can't remember what, what what it was called though but quite a few classes in the game I've used all of them all pretty good and um, 
long extensive skill tree that you can go through split into two parts so the skill tree is a lot easier to use than previous Diablos in my opinion but there is a lot of reading and um, these kind of games that are like dungeon crawler, uh, looter, uh, games where you can create your own build there is a lot of reading so please be warned if you're not interested in reading um, you can even brush up on your reading by playing <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> There's that much reading. If you don't read everything in mm -hmm. its entirety, then you're probably going to make mistakes. Like, and that's not to say about if you're playing through the story or anything, mm -hmm. you could skip most of the things that the, the NPCs say to you and it won't affect your gameplay. Okay. But when you're customising your character in terms of their abilities and what they can do, <coughs> you'll be doing yourself a favour by reading it you know, two to three times before okay. you made the decision. But um, skill tree is great. Uh, end game unlocks you with a, another skill tree. So I think the, the threshold before you can get into some kind of end game content is level 50. Right. Well, it's level 1 to 100, but once you get to level 50, there's an end game skill tree called Paragon. So this game is a, is, is a full package. It's quite a lengthy game. For scope, I've put 300 hours into the game mm. since release. And I only have... Uh, my main character is not even level cap. I have 196 character, a level 50. They've started a new season, which is going to finish on October 17th, mm -hmm. where I've got a new character in there as well, not even level 50 yet. So a very large game. If you need a game that you need to, I don't know, grind, grind mm -hmm. yeah, if you like a grind or mm -hmm. waste your life away kind of game, <laughs> this is definitely the one. <laughs> beautiful, um, beautiful synopsis of um, Diablo. And your experience, what would you give it out of 10? Out of 10, the only reasons why I would mark the game down mm -hmm. from being in the upper echelon for this kind of game is even though it's good, there's a lot to do, there's a lot of flexibility in builds, but there isn't the game kind of steers you towards a course. What the developers have done is they take away, they, they've done loads of patches. For example, mm -hmm. the Barbarian got nerfed in the first week took away all of his strength and power and they take away things from like different stat bonuses and stuff for example vulnerability they've reduced critical hit damage or certain things they've reduced so the developers are trying to steer you into playing the game how they perceived it to be played if that makes sense where you use i don't know more of a robust skill set or different or well, personalized skills well, from your experience what would you give it out of 10 out of 10 it's gonna have to be I'd say 6.5 maybe when the new season drops I think that score would go up a lot higher because a lot of changes that are going to bring to make the game more enjoyable but now that's interesting six point five. we've heard that 6.5 before Say like 6.5. <laughs> You've given quite a lengthy description of how you know the developers have screwed over um, screwed over this game and you give it a 6.5, but you know about that tech a bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, right? Moving yeah. on to moving on to Pank, thank you so much for that right entity as well. So moving on to K Noir second review, um you played Final Fantasy 16. That was released. When was that released? That's a good question. Very uh, recently, I think July. July. Well, roughly, roughly around June, July. June, July. But give yeah. us a. Um, I think it was the end of June actually, the twenty eighth or something. In terms of your experience, um, how did you get on with um, that game? And what first of all, what is the game? Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, so Final Fantasy has been around since SNES. Yeah. It's that's probably the first Final Fantasy. So, Nintendo says, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it started as a turn-based uh, RPG, um, but obviously since then they've modernised um, what that is. So it went from turn-based to more uh, dynamic uh, hack and slash. I should say very similar to uh, Devil May Cry in essence. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, JRPG at its core. Mm. So with this one, it's. Um, a lot more story driven I should, I should say, I think all Final Fantasy are story driven mm -hmm. but uh, this one, the story just really gripped me, it's very similar to uh, Game of Thrones, there's a lot of um, backstabbing, mystery, um, it's set in, um, you know, uh, way back when, okay. like 1800s, 1700s, it gives you that kind of feel. Mm -hmm. um, 
so yes, the, the story is great. I say nine to ten out of ten. The visuals are uh, amazing uh, mm -hmm. as well, um, which is a staple of Final Fantasy. You play any Final Fantasy game, even going back to number seven. You know the cutscenes have always been crisp. A one, mm -hmm. um, very very visually appealing. Mm -hmm. Fight scenes, you know, the action scenes have always been great. Um, yeah, in terms of the combat. Um, as I mentioned, Hack and Slash is very similar to Devil May Cry, mm -hmm. for those of you that are familiar with that. So, um, you know, the little square input you can combo uh, as well. If you, um, you know, uh, level up the character and uh, invest in certain abilities in the school tree. Mm -hmm. So obviously as you progress, you can unlock uh, new magic abilities, something called uh, Acorns, which is um, the summons that they have in the game. Um, so the main character starts off with Ifrit, which is another you know fan of fan fantasy mm -hmm. uh, summon. character summon. Uh, so he um, unlocks a lot of those uh, as the story progresses. So you can uh, chain different commands um, and magic abilities to extend combos. Also, sorry um, to interject, just because we spoke so we spoke sorry we spoke so deeply about Final Fantasy. We, we didn't even get the name of the main character. No, <laughs> Just the hurt, the hurt I'm uh, like, what's going on with the game? We've spoken about <laughs> what the game looks like and everything about the game. I'm like, what is his name? I think yeah. uh, the name is Eric. Just, just quickly, yeah, quickly skim yeah. over the story. That, that, sorry, that's, that's the key part. <laughs> the key part. His, his name's Protagonist. Yeah, just... <laughs> just he's just deep quickly, deep. yeah, just quickly over the... Um, just a bit, just a, literally the, the first part of the story. Um, well, from what you can remember. The first part? Yeah, just like, just give us a, 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 a quick minute rundown of what the first part of the story is. The main character, um... Oh, I see, I can't... Because it's, um... The main... The start of the story... Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big, it's a big twist. So it's, you know, spo spoiler, 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 it's very... Like, spoiler spoiler territory. Yeah, it definitely is. But I mean... But the main crux of it is that... Um, the Rosfeld family, so you're playing as Clive Rosfeld. Mm -hmm. Who's the main um, character of the game, mm -hmm. and he's basically been betrayed okay. by someone within his family. Right, but it's, a, it's, it's a mystery. It's, it's a mystery. Okay, who's done it? Right. Um, obviously, you find out early on in the game. Someone mm -hmm. say who. Um, so he's trying to get revenge, mm -hmm. and um, he gets recruited by a revolutionary, another uh, recurring character in the Final Fantasy series called mm -hmm. Sid. Mm -hmm. So he has a crew. And they're trying to take down uh, what it is it's, it's the empire. Okay. Right? And that's the overarching story. Okay. And what would you give it out of ten? Uh, out of ten, I want to say seven point five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you completed the game? I have not. Okay. I'm um, sixty to seventy percent. Okay. Yeah. I only asked you that as well because um, Rare Entity has said like he he said what his level cap is. So that gave like oh, yeah, 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 I'm saying. So just for you guys who are watching, um, there'll be no point of Kane not giving a review if he's played the game for ten minutes. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, so, <laughs> so he's got over fifty percent in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so there we go. This is this is a, um, a review off of seventy percent of gameplay. So he's mileage. more. Yeah. He's more. There's, that's mileage there. That mm. is mileage there. Mm. So he's more than um, enough qualified for this review. Mm. <laughs> but um, out of ten, you would give it a. Yeah, so we're back. Okay, cool. Okay. Wicked, wicked, wicked. All right then. So, <clears throat> interesting stuff with Final Fantasy. I um, have purchased the game myself as well. I um, haven't um, even gone up to I don't think fifteen percent yet. But <laughs> just here, just hearing everything, I, I agree exactly with exact. I agree with everything that um, my cousins are saying. But um, it's just fun hearing it from someone else's perspective. To be honest. Um, Absolutely great. The storyline as well. I was, I was hoping it would give me some. So I was like, damn, I can work some. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I might, that might be something for me to do after this recording, you know, go play that. Um, I think the final game um, I am um, going to be reviewing and it's Resident Evil. So Resident Evil came out in March the, 20, March the 24th. Um, I'm hoping that's the accurate date. Mm -hmm. um, it is a remake. Um, it stars, uh, is it Chris? Chris, isn't it? No, it's not Chris, it's Leon. Leon. Sorry, it's Leon. Leon, um, uh, Ada, um, I can't remember what the other girl was in it. The, 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 the daughter, the, um, what's her name? Michael. 
which was an evil My four. God, you know, <laughs> where's the evil four? Claire? No, it's not Claire. What's no, it's not Claire. I don't know, I can't remember. I think oh. it was Haley or Hannah or something. I never completed number four. Yeah. I can't remember what her name is, but. The girl's she's, not the main girl. Yeah, she's, she's yeah. not, but she's... Um, she's about Leon. Yeah, it's about Leon, but she, um, you have to protect her every five minutes, so yeah, that's, that's the reason why I said Everyone who knows the Resident Evil 4 story, it's that girl, okay? But visually <laughs> impeccable, um, they've done... That, that, I think that's one of the best remakes I've seen of a Resident Evil game. Mm -hmm. um, agree. They really uh, pulled out all the stock, so aesthetically, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you were you know, killing a zombie or being killed yourself, you were enjoying the visual, okay? Mm. The visual was very, very good. I think new gen games in general really do blow us all away with, um, or shows us how deprived we've been of just yeah. looking at good things on, like, we're playing the game and we want it to more or less look real. Just like the polygons before. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Story storyline as well. They didn't they didn't steer um, any different from um, the storyline before, so I can skim over that. It's literally exactly the same as Resident Evil Four, but it's giving you more of a um, polished appeal um, to the game, and also um, the smoothness smoothness of the game. Very very quick to do what you're doing. Um, no input delay, no nothing like that. It was it was a, a very great experience. I'll give it um, a nine out of ten purely because it's been done before, but they've done it better. Um, it's very hard to outdo yourself, especially with a project like that. So I think it's 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 a nice it's a high nine for me. Um, the only reason why it, it doesn't get a ten, this is just from my personal experience. I suffer from motion sickness. These guys know this. I suffer from motion sickness, so it affects me on games as well. And on Resident Evil. Um, they had a motion sickness um, setting, um, which I was very impressed with. Actually, I'll give it 9.5 because they had that. Unfortunately, though, it didn't work for me, okay? It didn't work for me. I still had to take pauses every now and again and yada, yada, yada. But that's the only reason why I mark it down. I think that game should get the perfect 10, to be honest. But from my personal experience, I have to mark it down 0 0.5 just because, I, you know what I mean? Every five minutes, I'm enjoying the game and then... Like in the corner, so literally. Um, so yes, I'll give that a nine point five. That summarizes our reviews for today. Please do like um, and subscribe. If any, if you guys want us to review any games, um, please do type them um, below, just so we can give you our personal takes on it. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more of this as well. Like uh, we did an episode one um, anime reviews. Um, Episode 2 has been game reviews. We're going to alternate between the two um, and maybe offer you guys um, more of a review or something. We could even do cartoon reviews, but it's all about what you guys want to see. So please do comment um, below, subscribe, and um, until next time, see you there, guys. We VIP. We VIP. We VIP. We VIP. We VIP, we VIP, we VIP, we VIP.